Hi, I'm Mark with Advanced Assembly, and I'm here to tell you about Vapor Phase Reflow. Without solder to attach electronic components to printed circuit boards, modern electronics would not exist. Solder metals have to melt before they can form intermetallic bonds with base metals, and that means transferring heat into an assembly through either conduction, convection, or radiation. Too little heat applied for too little time might prevent intermetallic formation, and without interfacial crystals, the solder won't stick. Nevertheless, you can't just drop a board in an oven and hope for the best. Too much heat applied for too long can damage components and the printed circuit board base materials. So reflow profiles are carefully designed to expose the solder metal to just enough heat for just enough time to melt the solder, stay liquid for long enough, and then start cooling down at just the correct rate. Theoretical heating and cooling curves rarely work out in practice. Assembly houses must create custom reflow profiles for all of their panels and all of the boards as they pass through the machine. But not all assembly processes are created equal. Infrared reflow, for example, is especially problematic since the temperature can rise high enough in some areas to damage components and melt the dielectric materials. At the same time, tall features cast shadows on other parts of the board. Convection reflow is usually the reflow method of choice since multiple heating and cooling zones can precisely control the panel temperature the entire time. Still, components with high thermal mass can require that the whole board remain at a high temperature for an extended time, potentially damaging sensitive components. Another method, called vapor phase reflow, can precisely control the entire board's temperature without ever having to worry about damaging temperature excursions. It does this with a clever bit of physical chemistry called phase change. You see, Usually when a material absorbs or releases heat, the temperature of the material changes. But under certain conditions, the temperature remains constant while properties of the material change. At those unique pressures, volumes, and temperatures, enormous amounts of energy can be absorbed or released while the temperature plateaus. Perfluorinated polyethers work well for the fluid. The length of these long-chain molecules determines the specific transition temperatures, and the high fluid density keeps the gas confined to the tank. The chemical engineer's trick is to select a solder that melts at a temperature a few degrees above the surrounding fluid's condensation temperatures. In vapor phase reflow, liquid PTFE is heated inside a tank until it begins to evaporate. Then a panel is lowered horizontally into the gaseous PTFE tank. Gas molecules condense on the panels and release heat energy into the board, the components, and the solder. The assembly can stay in the tank long enough to allow proper intermetallic crystal formation and then withdrawn slowly to relieve mechanical stresses caused by variable coefficients of thermal expansion. If you have an unusual project that involves heavy copper, thick boards, multiple layer stacks, or requires high reliability, you should investigate whether or not vapor phase reflow is right for you. At Advanced Assembly, we provide custom convection reflow and vapor phase reflow for all of our customers. To learn more, Contact sales at aapcb.com today.